allowing myself to be in this balanced state all the time. I'm so grateful to my parents. They allowed me to be this a little bit different kid. <laughs> like letting myself wonder, letting myself coming up with whatever I I, I thought it's, it's kind of meaningful and purposeful, even from the young age. And I really remember one of my first scientific experiments at the age of under 10. <laughs> so we were this family uh, living in the countryside and uh, going to forests to pick up mushrooms and berries. And uh, I was uh, much more, I don't know, willing not to pick up anything particular because it kind of was a hard work for a kid under 10 years and I was observing trees. So I was seeing the differences. I was saying, oh, these trees are healthy. They are having all the leaves and branches and everything. But there's some of the trees are look like they are getting old. Some of the skin peels off. Some of the branches have already broken down and some the, the, the leaves are not there and I thought oh but there are these other trees already on the ground so that means that's a part of the nature nobody told me this I was observing it okay and the trees will fall eventually and I thought if I can try to help them like before they kind of fall themselves I will just okay will help them before a little bit <laughs> and then I realized but not all of them are ready to fall so there are some trees that are ready, some of them are not. And then what I was training, I was training my ability to predict and assess from a distance, just for the observation. Would I able to catch some tiny details that this tree makes a difference? And then I would say, okay, this one I, I can get down and this one I cannot. And I just got better and better every single time. So I, again, this comes with the feeling the experience and then aligning that experience with what resonates with our biology and all of the way of our being. And then later I was open to new things coming in. I was allowing them. And to some degree I was looking for those. And I was looking for something that would be beyond the convention, beyond what everybody else is doing. I will skip forward to my master degree or my first university. And that was the time when computers were just arriving to our living space and working spaces. And I was lucky to get to the one particular competition and I got the particular result. And I was admitted at that time to the computer science, which was now many years ago. <laughs> so, and it took me on this journey well okay we can build technologies to help us and then later i got to the re revelation we can build computers and they work or they don't but i got bored with it because it's like you, you, you get this process oriented uh, thinking but i became very early interested into the human subjects so even at the computer science master i was predominantly selecting subjects related with the psychology philosophy economics, all those management uh, topics. And then right after I got into the manage other people and then I got to go and, and give uh, like take an MBA uh, degree. So I did that and then I was spending a nice career evolving step by step, multinational IT companies, business development, customer relationships, sales management. And I was combining these two like human factors and IT evolution and all of those things but then to some degree i was um, realizing the question arrived to me and this is one thing i can tell to anybody if there's a question coming to your mind for the most of the cases there's an implied answer so my question was after long career two master degrees the question was am i happy <laughs> so if the question arrives if i were happy the question wouldn't appear so the question was no and i was like okay what would make me happy so looking at the eastern philosophy it says you're happy if you do the things you love the whole day it's just like kids are playing i was like oh what would be the thing that i love and at that time i was like okay people technology people technology i don't know let's ask google so i throw into the google i found this way of designing technologies to help people change realizing that so many people want to change and I went to do my PhD. And that was the most impactful decision on my life. Because ever since, for the last already almost 10 years, 
I'm being fulfilling my life with doing exactly that. I'm uncovering what means human change and sustain sustainable human change, which I call transformation, and then how technologies can help us to amplify, to ripple those effects through our social fabric. So therefore, kind of a quick run through my journey, it's all about having this inner feeling, awareness, possibly even not necessarily conscious, but the feeling that you have this inner wisdom that is always with you and that tells to you what resonates and what's in, in alignment with yourself. And I was always having this inter, inner interaction open so that I could align my interaction with the ex external world and being able to spot those possibilities and take them in, in my life. Although there were a lot of times when I didn't know what it means, but I, I just felt I'm curious. I think if I need really to list my gifted talents, I, I have a great deal of curiosity. <laughs> I have a great deal of intelligence and I have a great deal of strategic approach. So if those three are combined, this is where I am today. First, personal transformation. Around age of 14, and I was overweight. And I was, for that reason, different from other kids. I was still enjoying life, but there was something telling to me that, well, it, it, it's different experience than for the other people. And I really made a commitment and I don't, I cannot recall exactly what happened, of course, but what practically was, I was sent or I, I, I went to a summer camp. So my parents allowed me to go to the summer camp, which was for the education and a little bit of fun and just to spend time with the smart kids uh, that also participated in those competitions. And uh, there was this daily plan where you have the morning and the breakfast and then the, some classes and then lunch and after lunch there were more classes but there was this one hour and people of course they can choose whatever they do and I chose to go to a stadium so there was a stadium and it was the there were these tracks for running and the one track was 300 meters like a, not, not a big deal, right? <laughs> so you can do one anytime. And whatever was in my mind at that time, I said, I'm going to do 10. 10 is a good number. And most importantly, it's not about one lap. It's not about 10 laps. I did it every single day as a non-questionable routine. It was just like, that's in my agenda. So for everyone, the agenda was breakfast, class, lunch, class, dinner, something else. For me, it was breakfast, class, lunch, stadium, <laughs> class, and it works. And again, what it was really, it was this. So what do I do after lunch? I don't know. What do I do after lunch? I go to the stadium, bam. <laughs> and uh, it just came to the obvious results. I luckily had this, so my parents with me after three weeks and my shorts wouldn't be on me if I didn't have this hold, like, like holding them. And, and that was something I think subconsciously was installed in my body. Not as it wasn't before, but it was installed consciously as an experience. Of course, all of we have that power, but then it was confirmed and validated. And I think ever since I'm tapping into it, whenever there is a real concern that I would like to address. So later I played ice hockey and I was in a good shape, but then some trouble can happen. And I got my leg ankle broken in the game and I was off the sports, my weight came back and I had to figure out a different way. And then I asked with my, uh, to my fr good friend radiologist, what do I do? He said, now there's the other way how you can manage your weight. That's about look what you eat and then he said you have two options you control the amount or you control the content i said oh amount no 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 that's sacred no 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 okay then we go with the list and then you have only the foods on the list 
the other things disappear from the world. They don't exist. You don't see them. And that's what actually happened. So I was constantly following the list of the foods that I eat. And over the time in a grocery store, some of the shelves disappeared. I didn't see them. Like sometimes people are blind to the advertisements or stuff like that. The same happened with me with the eating. I don't see it. Sometimes I go to a party and there's this table with everything. I don't see cakes. I don't see some kind of sweet things. And it's just not 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 in alignment with myself so therefore all of these tiny experiences and i'm always suggesting start with a small thing and get the confirmation get the validation that you have the transformation gene get some energy to it like just because you have the access to energies just redirect some of the energy to activate your transformation gene and then enjoy the magic once you start one tiny thing second tiny thing third tiny thing you just gradually become an upgraded person, a person who is mastering the transformation. I'm just so confident because I've, my, my own experience tells that I've been seeing other people using some of the tools and really enjoying that and seeing how that works. I am the only barrier for my own happiness and fulfillment. And that realization is fundamental because predominantly the bias, the delusion is that happiness is outside and we need to capture it. We need to do something for it. We need to grab it. And that's also when we are kind of now closing the loop, coming back to the human energetic intelligence and we are not accumulators. We cannot accumulate happiness. We cannot accumulate fulfillment. It's our state. And if we want to achieve that state, we need to give up the mindset, which is about to getting something uh, outside or looking for something outside, but really being observer of what is happiness in your experience, your internal experience, and why it was very pleasurable journey for me is because I was capturing those moments when there was a conditioning that I had just had incorporated in my identity when there was some belief false belief which was just created and i just maintained it as my own and when i cracked one of these and then a second one and a third it happened the same as with these tiny steps on the vectoral transformation i just got into this experience it's, it's possible and it's doable and um, because of my computer science background and because of my curiosity into the science, and some people also say there is something special about this, the mind of the scientist, and I would agree. There is something that really kind of naturally pulls me towards uncovering, understanding, going deeper, deeper in everything. And currently I'm going deeper in myself and I'm kind of unveiling like whale after the whale. And um, the joy and the fulfillment of this journey is not comparable to anything external because the anything external comes and goes but what you have uncovered in yourself stays with you forever and it's not that it wasn't there it was always there it's just how you have enabled yourself to access it and that's the what could be the purpose of uh, life for many people it's realization that essentially you have everything and it's just that for some reason for whatever reason that essential fullness and completeness has been distorted and has been damaged by the delusions and uh, still are and maintained by so many other external factors is just a construct and why i'm so much more into this is because currently looking how people speak about the physics of consciousness and speaking about consciousness altogether, what it is, so material or the spiritual and how it's intertwined. And of course we know that there is this uh, discussion about the brain and the brain activity and the consciousness. And they kind of have this natural, cor they are natural correlates. So they kind of represent, but then we don't need to make any kind of a claim whether the one is the first and the other is the second and which originates the other. I think because if we acknowledge our limitations, 
and acknowledge our ability is being limited, we just naturally will become more open to all of the experiences and just take what is resonating with us, what is speaking in our soul's <laughs> language. And um, that's the way how most of the life challenges will naturally disappear because I think those are the byproducts. So global challenges are the byproducts of poor decision making and poor collective decision making on the on the country scale and then city scale and then we, we scale down to individual. The same applies. We make decisions every day and if those decisions are driven by delusions and biases and not in alignment with the true nature, that's the outcome what we get. So people are the the delusionally looking for mysterious happiness and avoiding the one that they have all the time and I've just um, cannot say anything else but you start doing it and you just have your fulfillment and enjoyment on this path for the rest of your life and that's uh, will be always with you no matter what if anyone wants to find anything about my work there is just one gateway and it's the website transforms.me and you can get everything and anything of my work and also get in touch with me.